Okay, folks, so I'm gonna show you how to do some linear trend line fitting in Python. So uh, I've already sort of brought this data in from one of the homework problems in the, this uh, instrumentation book. Um, these are the two modules that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use NumPy or NumPy and matplotlib here. And so I've got a data vector here that's temperature in Celsius, and then I've got a data vector here that's voltage. Um, if you had an Excel spreadsheet or a uh, text file or something like that, like you could easily like import that in using the load text module. But in this case, it was only like, what, seven data points or six data points. And so I just typed it in manually. Uh, I went ahead and built a little bit of this code before. Um, so I went ahead and plotted voltage as a function of temperature, or sorry, temperature as a function of voltage. And so if I hit F5 here, um, oop, maybe not, let's try again. There we go. So you get this uh, plot here and basically, you have the the problem is that you have a, a thermocouple and you're trying to calibrate it and so the idea is is that you uh, put a thermocouple in a certain temperature and you have another sensor that's measuring temperature and so basically you need you need sort of two sensors you need a thermocouple that's uncalibrated and you need a temperature sensor that is calibrated and so you take the temperature sensor that's calibrated and you measure the temperature from there and that's what gives you that's what gives you this data vector here and then as you increase the temperature however you're doing that um, you measure the voltage using your analog to digital converter or just a voltmeter, however you want to do it. Um, and so in this case, what you have is you have uh, voltage on this axis. And this essentially says, like, if this voltage was coming in as my uh, input to my analog to digital converter, I want to be able to convert it to a temperature without using that extra sensor. And so that's essentially what we're going to do here. Um, there's a way to do this by hand using a re regression line and using some, uh, some Gauss's uh, least squares regression. Um, but you know, since you're using Python, you can actually use a, uh, a built-in module. So we're going to compute the trend line here, trend line. And what we're going to do is we're going to use something called uh, polyfit. And so I'm going to say uh, polyfit, which that basically means polynomial fit. And you're going to give it the x-axis, the y-axis, and then you're going to give it the, or sorry, the x-coordinates, the y-coordinates, and then you're going to give it the order. And so one obviously is linear. And so two would be quadratic, three would be cubic. And so I'll show you that later. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just print the coefficients here so you can take a look at it. So it's gonna run the code and then it's gonna spit out these two coefficients here, right? So this one here is 24. So you can easily see that that 24 is the slope, right? So if the uh, voltage increases by one, the temperature increases by 24.6, okay? And so that's what that coefficient is. The second one is the, uh, the, the y-intercept. Yeah, the y-intercept. So basically, this is giving us a fitting line that's equal to y equals mx plus b, except in this case, y is the temperature, and then m is fine, and then x is not the, the uh, x-coordinate, it's uh, voltage. And so that's my equation there. So m is then just the first element of that coefficient matrix, uh, or, or array, I guess it's an array. Um, so it's the first element here. And then B, the y-intercept, is the second one. And so if I want to compute a line, what I can do is I can then say, like, okay, let's, let's um, plot a trend line, okay? And so the idea there is I'm going to say um, V trend, and I'm going to do NP uh, lin space, and I'm going to take the first voltage coordinate and the last voltage coordinate, and I'm going to do 100 data points. And so that's basically just going to give me 100 data points from the first voltage a value that I grabbed and the last voltage value that I grabbed. And then I'm going to say T trend is going to be M times V trend plus B. And so that's going to give me my trend line there. And so uh, if I go ahead and just do plt.plot V trend T trend, and I'm going to do this in a red line like this, and I plot that, we should see a red trend line just uh, right on there, just like that, which is kind of neat. Um, you'll notice that there's some error here. So what is kind of nice to do is compute your residuals. So in order to compute residuals, so let's compute residuals. The first thing you need to compute is T tilde, which is basically your estimate of your temperature based on your voltages. So that's just your, um, your input voltages, like your input data set times MX plus B in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and print T, but I'm also going to print T tilde like that. And so what you're going to see, uh, let's see, you can't multiply sequence. 
So it doesn't like V because V is a lit. Uh, so when you make a bracketed list in Python, it's not actually an array. Um, so for some reason, Polyfit was able to handle that and say like, oh, you know, this is a list, but I'm going to go ahead and treat it as an array. Um, unfortunately, you know, doing uh, matrix multiplication like this, it doesn't like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert um, v to an array. And so as array just means as array. So it's saying take this list and convert it to an array. And so when I hit F5 there, um, it'll, it'll go ahead and let me do it. And so you look here, this row is the, uh, oh, is this, this is the temperature data that I got from the calibrated sensor. And then this is all of the results from um, the data set that is, is, sorry, for my trend line fit. So if you look here, like at one volt, it's 15.9 ish. And then at one point, whatever volts, it's like 28. And so you can kind of see that. Um, if I wanted to, I could, I could go ahead and plot these on the, on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna just plot my PLT. Um, I'm gonna do uh, V and then uh, T tilde. And I'm gonna plot those in green stars. Um, and so we should see some green stars and you, let me maximize this. So the blue dots are the data that we gathered. The red line is the trend line. And then the green stars are the values of temperature at our sample data points. And so from the other thing that we can do is, yeah, we've got, we can plot the, uh, the measured signal, but we can also plot residuals itself. Okay, and so we can do plt.figure and drop a new figure down and we can plot v comma t tilde minus um, t. And I'm actually gonna save this as a different ve uh, vector. And so I'm gonna say, that my residuals is equal to t tilde minus t. Um, and so that's gonna compute the error between my uh, measured signal and my trend line fit. Um, and so I'm gonna get residuals here and I'm not gonna do any grids or anything like, well, here, let's, let's throw a grid down, but I'm not going to uh, plot any axes or anything. So I'm gonna get two figures. And remember, you don't wanna, f you don't wanna connect the dots when you're plotting data because when you're doing that, you're actually making up data. You can't interpolate in between them. The trend line is fine because we're assuming like, hey, we're fitting a trend line to this. Um, but so here are residuals. And this is kind of, when I look at this, this is kind of interesting because it actually looks like, you know, this here has sort of some shape to it. And I don't necessarily like that it has a shape to it. Um, I'm gonna get back to that in a second. The other thing that I wanna do once I have residuals is I can compute um, my R squared value. And I gotta look this up in the book real quick. Um, but the R squared, there's an equation for R squared. And it is equal to, yeah, it's one minus. So you've gotta do R, I'm gonna say R squared is one minus. It is the uh, sum of your residuals squared divided by the sum of your sample data points. So T minus the mean value of T and then uh, all of that squared. Okay, and then I'm gonna print R2. And so the, the books here says if um, a good, yeah, for engineering data, R squared will normally be quite high at 0.8 or higher. So let's see. So we got 0.96. Okay, so uh, I was saying that my um, trend line doesn't look right, but hey, you know what? It looks like it did okay. Um, th anyway, the I'm gonna go ahead and leave this code as is, but I do wanna do one more thing and it has to do with the order. So again, just let me just recap the code real quick. And then if you wanna stick around for the rest of this, you can. So. Um, I have these two modules, NumPy and Matplotlib. I have my data vectors. I have uh, my plotting routine here. Um, these two here create the coefficients. So that gives me slope and the y-intercept. And so I grab the slope and the y-intercept here. Um, and then I compute the trend line and then I plot it. And then uh, I compute the residuals by computing the estimated temperature at those sample data points. The residuals are the sample or the the measured signal minus the um, 
estimate at those values from my trend line. Uh, I plot the residuals here, and then I compute my R squared value, and that's just an equation in the book. Um, okay, so at, at this point, if, if you want to just pause here, that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to move uh, to a different code here, so I'm going to I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hit Control A, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to do uh, polynomial, polynomial, polynomial trend line. So sometimes if you look at those residuals, like I didn't, it seems like I had a shape to it. And I'm wondering if, um, if I increase the order, I might actually get a better fit here. And so um, this is all the same, except instead of doing uh, y equals mx plus b, I'm actually gonna get rid of that completely. And when I compute my trend line, I'm actually gonna do np.polyval, which basically says, take these x coordinates and these coefficients and create a trend line. And then from here, when I compute my residuals, my estimate is not gonna be this, but it's gonna be np.polyval of v comma, the coefficients. And uh, everything else should stay the same, and then the r squared will stay the same. So if I run this now, uh, of course, it threw an error. Uh, whenever you get Python errors like this, you need to scroll up to the top. So it looks like this, line of code which is line 24 so which one was that is that this one here um, yeah so uh, I guess did I do this is it possible that I did this backwards I could look this up on Google and look at the you know docs or whatever but yeah I definitely did it backwards okay because it got rid of the first error so let me put coef comma v. Okay, cool. So everything's the same. I've got my linear trend line and then my, 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 my form, my residuals that are, kind of have a shape to it. So based on that shape, I'm kind of thinking that this is cubic, but I'm going to go with, I'm going to just do a zero order hold just so you kind of see what happens. So if you do zero order, it's just going to give you a, uh, well, if your graphics card crashes, um, then uh, nothing's going to happen. But if you uh, try again, there you go. So the trend line is this flat, and you look at this, your residuals clearly have a linear shape to it. So it's like, okay, that, that didn't work, right? So uh, we've already done linear, so I'm gonna go quadratic and try again. And so first of all, what you'll notice is that the, uh, the these are my, are, well, let me look at my, uh, yeah, here you go. Th these are my coefficients. You'll notice that there is an A0, so I have a, I have a uh, this is actually my y-intercept now. And then, or sorry, this is my y-intercept, this is my slope, and then this is my quadratic term. And so what happens is you basically just get an extra term. So it's, you're, you're fitting your trend line to x squared. And you look at this line, it is way better. And if you look at our r squared value, it's 98% now. Now again, you know, 96% to 98%, the linear line was probably fine. You were only having like introducing like 4% error. But if you look at my residuals now, they're totally random. There's a little bit of a sine wave component, but that sine wave is like fifth order and there's only seven data points. So if you tried to go crazy and say like, you know what, I'm gonna fit a fourth order system to this, what's gonna happen is your system is gonna start doing this, which you're like, oh wow, that's completely perfect, right? But I mean, how accurate with your data? You're basically fitting noise at that point. And yeah, you, now you've completely gotten a random system, um, but you know, you're, you're pretty good there. I guess your, your, your R squared value is 99%, but you're getting into a situation where you're fitting noise. Um, I, would, I would personally say, that the uh, let's try let's try the cubic because I think the quadratic was pretty good. Now see that that looks weird. I, I've never seen a temperature curve that looks like that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say quadratic is probably the way to go. And uh, and go with that one. And there we go. So there's your uh, trend line fitting. So I hope I hope this helped. Um, post in the comments if you have any questions. And um, I don't know. Happy coding. Have a nice day.